Good morning, church! Happy first Sunday of July. So, welcome to GCF. For those watching us online via our Facebook Live, we invite you to share our online stream by tagging our family and friends in the comment by tagging your family and friends in the comment section. Before we begin, let us reflect on this verse from Hebrews 4, 14 to 16 from the New International Version. It says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has ascended into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are. Yet he did not sin. Let us then approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and grace to help us in our time of need. Let us all stand and worship our Lord together. Good morning, everyone. Good morning po. Bati natin yung ating mga brothers and sisters. I'm so glad that you are here. Sabihin mo po sa kanya. Eh, tunay nga po, nakakagalak na tayo po ay magkakasamang muli. Di ba po? Nakakamiss din naman na magpuri sa Panginoon ng sama-sama. Hallelujah. Sabi po dito sa Psalms 103, Praise the Lord my soul, all my inmost being. Praise His holy name. Praise the Lord my soul and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, the crowns, You with the love and compassion. Yan. Tunay nga, nakaka-bless po 
ang ginagawa ng Panginoon sa ating buhay. Amen? Hindi man po natin kontrol ng mga nangyayari, but God has promised us na kasama po natin siya sa araw-araw. Kaya hindi tayo matatakot dahil hawak ng Diyos ang ating kinabukasan. Amen? Amen. Purihin natin ang Panginoon. Let us sing for the glory of God.
Worship God today. Let us lift our voice to worship the Lord. Let's thank Him for all that He has done to us. Hindi lang sa araw na ito, maging yung mga nakaraan na ginawa sa atin ang Panginoon. to you, Panginoon, para pumapasalamatin ka namin sa lahat ng kabutihan mo sa amin. We are blessed, Panginoon, because you are there. 
Keeping your promise to us, Panginoon. Na hindi mo po kami iiwan, hindi mo kami pababayaan, Panginoon. Lord, we pray that you empower us with your spirit. Empower us with your word, Panginoon. For us to fulfill our mission, Panginoon, sa mundong ito. Declare your name, Panginoon, maging karapat-dapat kami at mapapurihan ang iyong pangalan, Panginoon. worship you and we honor you. Ikaw lang, Panginoon, ang aming hope. Ikaw ang aming strength. And truly, Father, we'll continue to honor you, Panginoon, sa magitan ng aming mga buhay na pinagalo, Panginoon, sa iyo. We worship you, God. We honor you. Church, let us declare God's blessing. Declare the name of the Lord in this place. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Salamat, Panginoon, sa pag-ibig mong walang hanggan sa iyong mga anak. Hindi man kami karapat-dapat. Ito kami, Panginoon. We're offering our lives to you, Lord. Hallelujah. Offering our heart in this mission field, Panginoon. Salamat, Panginoon. Pinapupurihan ka namin, pinasasalamatan, tinataas namin ang iyong pangalan sa lugar na ito, Panginoon. Tunay nga na ikaw ay karapat-dapat na pagalaya ng aming papuri pagsamba sa umagang ito. Hallelujah. Palakpakan natin ang Diyos na buhay. You are a good, good Lord, good Father, and you're so good to us, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray. Let's all be seated. Patuloy po natin damhin ang presensya ng ating Diyos. Tayo po ay patuloy na makipag-usap sa Kanya sa panalangin. Tunay o Diyos, katulad ng aming pong mga inawit, ikaw ay napakabuti sa amin. Napakabuti mo, Panginoon, sapagkat sa kabila na kami ay makasalanan, kami inibig mo. Napakabuti mo, Panginoon, sapagkat ibinigay mo sa amin yung, yung bagay na we are not worthy. Lord, salamat sa kaligtasan na meron kami. Salamat sa katiyakan na kami ay laging nasa yung presensya. Salamat, Panginoon, sa iyong uh, dugo na ibinigay doon sa Cruz ng Kalbaryo upang madama po namin ang kaligtasan na meron kami ngayon. At ang kaligtasan ito, Panginoon, ay damadalangin kami na gamitin mo kami upang yung kaligtasan ito ay maibahagi po namin doon sa iba. Panginoon, ikaw nga po ang siyang uh, uh, patuloy magbibigay sa amin ng mga opportunity, Lord, to share your word and give us, Lord, the courage, the strength, Lord, para uh, ishare po namin yung kabutihan mo at ang kaligtasan na aming pong nadarama. Pangayong salamat sapagkat ang kabutihan mo ay hindi lang natatapos doon sa krus. Salamat, Panginoon, dahil ang presensya mo ay lagi po naming nararanasan. Nasa kabila, Panginoon, ang aming pong mga pinagdadaanan sa buhay. Uh, meron pong mga challenges, may mga situation, Lord, na aming kinakaharap. Ngunit salamat sapagkat ang presensya mo ay laging nariyan. Ikaw, Panginoon, ang laging dumadamay sa amin. Salamat, O Diyos, sapagkat uh, maari po namin iparating sa inyo. Ano man yung mga uh, nadadama namin, yung kahirapan na aming uh, uh, nararanasan. Salamat dahil ikaw, Panginoon, ang laging gumagabay, 
Ikaw, Panginoon, na nagbibigay sa amin ng kapayapaan sa kabila po, Panginoon, ng mga sitwasyon na aming pong pinagdadaanan. Salamat po, Panginoon, sapagkat Ikaw ang Diyos na patuloy na nagpo-provide ng kalakasan sa amin upang, Panginoon, mapagtagumpayan po namin ang bawat challenges, ang bawat situation na aming pong kinakaharap. Lord, salamat sapagkat sa pagkakatong ito, maaari po namin uh, iparating sa inyo yung mga nararanasan po namin. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa pribilehyo na kami ay pwede makipag-usap sa iyo sa magitan ng panalangin. Kaya, Lord, patuloy kami na lumalapit sa iyo. Amin din pong inilalapit, Panginoon, ang mga uh, kapatiran po namin na nakakaranas ng mga matitinding pagsubok din ngayon sa buhay, dinadalangin namin, O Diyos, na Ikaw ang sumama sa kanila. Meron din po kami mga kapatiran, Lord, na uh, sila ay nakakaranas ng mga karamdaman ngayon. Salamat, because you are our Jehovah Rapa, Ikaw ang Diyos na nagpapagaling. Kaya Lord, amin po silang inilalapit sa inyo, na wapanginoon, hipuin mo po sila nang iyong mapagpagaling na kamay, nang iyong mapagpalang kamay at ipadama ang kagalingan na nagmumula po sa iyo. Panginoon, patuloy po namin pinagkakatiwala sa iyo ang aming pananabahan na ito na nawa, O Diyos, masamba ka namin palagi sa Espiritu at Katotohanan. At sa pagtunghay po namin sa iyong salita, dalangin namin na buksan mo po ang aming puso't isipan Madama namin, makita po namin kung ano yung ninanais mo para sa amin. Salamat Ama, purihin ka, ito ang aming samadalangin, sa pangalan Yesus, Amen and Amen. For our tithes and offering, allow me to read this passage from Acts 20, which was also our series topic last Sunday. It says, In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak, remembering the words the Lord Jesus himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Acts 20 verse 35. So let us pray for our offering. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this time that we are here together, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to give back to you. We praise you, Lord, for always being the God who provides for us and for the church. And we ask, Lord, that as we give our offering today, Lord, you allow us to give it with a cheerful, cheerful heart, Lord, and that we would, and that this offering, Lord, would be used to further expand your kingdom, Lord, and further build up the church so that more people can be reached. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, and we lift up everything to you. In Jesus' name, amen. So you may deposit your tithes and offering via our Metro Bank account through bank transfer or GCash. So the details are posted on your screens. And please save a screenshot or a screen capture of your transaction and email us so that we can document your giving accordingly. For our worshipers here with us, you may drop your giving at the drop box located at the back near the main door. So let us now prepare our hearts today as we listen to the word. Empowered disciples, that's who we are. Ikaw, ako, binigyan ng Panginoon, ng kapangyarihan upang maging saksi para sa ating Panginoon. Not based on our skills, but based on the empowerment that comes through the Holy Spirit. Yes, lahat tayong nanampalataya sa Panginoon, meron po tayo nun. Ayon po sa Acts 1.8, the key verse of our sermon series on the book of Acts, it reads, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. And that Holy Spirit has come and is dwelling in each believer. The moment that you have trusted Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is upon you, and He's the one empower you to become witness of Jesus Christ. 
Looking at this verse, we now tackle chapters 21 and 22 this morning. Ilang tulog na lang po, matatapos na tayo sa Book of Acts. I would like to show you once more. Next slide, please. The three missionary journeys that Paul did in fulfillment of Acts 1.8. So, nung narito pa po ang Panginoong Isus, nagtanong ang mga disipulo sa kanya, are you at this point going to restore the kingdom? Parang tayo din lang, di ba, nagtatanong, Lord, uh, babalik na ba kayo to restore everything in order? Or perhaps you're asking, uh, Lord, with all the news of wars and rumors of wars, with all the earthquakes happening, famines, are you going to restore your kingdom soon? Or maaring ang tanong mo ay, Lord, uh, ano ba yung dapat kong gawin? You told us that we should live our lives as though you are coming very soon, or even today. Uh, we are now living in the age wherein we should be living in the day of the Lord. Kasi nga, yung day of the Lord, sabi sa Bible, yun yung, yun yung sinasabing araw na babalik ang Panginoon to reward His followers and to bring judgment to those who rejected Jesus Christ. So, ang katanungan mo ba ay, Lord, ano ba? Ano ba, Lord? Ano dapat kong gawin? Uh, ano ba yung, ito yung plano ko, Lord? Ano ba ang dapat kong gawin? Ano yung sagot mo? At alam nyo, anong sagot ni Lord? Sa marami nating katanungan, you will receive power because the Holy Spirit will be upon you and is upon you and you will be my witnesses. Kayo ang maging saksi ng ating Panginoong Yesus. Now, the book of Acts will show us how it was fulfilled in the time of the New Testament. First missionary journey covered in Acts chapter 13 and 14. Nagsimula po sa Antioch. Bakit nagsimula sa Antioch? Kasi sa Jerusalem, nagkaroon ng mga pag, uh, persecutions. Yung mga mano ng palataya, nangalat sa iba't ibang lugar at marami na punta sa Antioch. At ito po naging sending church. So, ito yung base sa bawat biyahe ni Paul. So, first missionary journey... Of course, paano natatapos yun? Sa pagbabalik. Okay, so that's first. And then, the second missionary journey, mas malayo na. The bagay, anyway, again, this map, kung titignan natin sa modern map, ito yung Mediterranean Sea, of course. Egypt is here. This is modern Turkey. Okay? Syria is here. Jerusalem is here. So, dito muli nagsimula sa Antioch. Mas malayo yung biyahe for the second missionary journey. At nagkaroon ng pangatlo. Pangatlong missionary journey, again, nagsimula sa Antioch at bumiyahe po muli si Paul. Three missionary journeys. And if you call his travel to Rome, and you will call it the fourth missionary journey, some will do that. Okay? So, ito po. At ngayon pong araw na to, nasa Acts chapter 21 tayo. At dito po tayo mag ng few lessons with regard to how it is to become empowered disciples. We learn from Paul several lessons. Now, we'll start with Paul in Caesarea. Naroon siya, at ito po ang pangyayari habang naroon siya. On the next day, we departed and came to Caesarea. Nakatuwa yung writer, no? Sino nga ulit sumulat ng Book of Acts? Si Luke. So ngayon, sinasabi niya, kasama na siya, we. Madalas sinasabi niya, si Paul, si Paul, mga disciples. Ngayon, sinasabi niya, kasama siya. We departed and came to Caesarea. And we entered the house of Philip, the evangelist, who was one of the seven. Sino si Philip? Siya yung sa Acts chapter 5 or 6, Rain, 
napapabayaan yung mga widows kasi nga yung distribution ng assistance napapabayaan and so they decided they need to come up with um, people of wisdom and, and by the spirit so that they can assist so that the elders the disciples the apostles can focus on prayer and the teaching of God's word so isa siya this is seven and natumigil sila with Philip and his household. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. While we were staying for many days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Habang narun daw sila, may isang propeta, dumating si Agabus, at ito po ang sabi ni Agabus. Coming to us, he took Paul's belt and bound him, bound his own feet and hands and said, Thus says the Holy Spirit, this is how the Jews at Jerusalem will bind the man who owns this belt and deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. So may prophecy ah, na ano mangyari kay Paul? Meron daw mangyari sa kanyang matindi at ito daw mangyari. So, ginawa ni Agabus yung kay Pakino, yung belt niya, no? So, of course, hindi yung modern belt. Hindi ko magamit to kasi pag ko, baka, you know. <laughs> Kaya nagdala ko na extra. And so, binound si Paul. Okay. And so, ganito daw mangyari sa'yo, Paul. Ito ang gagawin ng mga Jews sa'yo at ikaw ay hand over to the Gentiles. Both hands and feet. Now, when we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, Siyempre, nung narinig ng mga kasama ni Paul, Paul, wag ka nang pumunta sa Jerusalem kasi ganyan mangyayari sa'yo. Ika'y iaaresto. Then Paul answered, What are you doing? Weeping and breaking my heart. Ano ginagawa niyo? Bakit niyo ako pinanghihinaan ng loob? For I am ready not only to be imprisoned, but even to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Grabe. Sinabi kay Paul, you will be arrested. But Paul said, I'm ready not only to be imprisoned. Nakahanda akong hindi lamang makulong, nakahanda akong mamatay para sa Panginoong Jesus. While studying this passage for this sermon, I was reading this verse, my first reaction was humbling. Humbling. So, ano po ba sa Tagalog ang humbling? Ginugal ko. Ano nga bang humbling? Ang sabi sa Google, nagpapakumbaba. Well, in the context, I think the right, better word is nakakapagpakumbaba. Tama? Humbling. Nakakapagpakumbaba. Pero parang kulang pa rin eh. So may tinanong ako, yung lagi kong kasama sa bahay, ano bang better way to explain? Sabi niya, humbling, yung gusto mo magtago <laughs> sa ilalim ng mesa, yun daw yung humbling. Kasi nga, when we think of our own Christian walk, it's truly really humbling. Are we really ready to die for Jesus Christ? Nakanda ba tayong i-aresto at mamatay para sa Panginoong Isus? When we talk about this verse, may inclusion of suffering, right? So who would want to suffer for the sake of Jesus Christ? Ang hirap. Hirap ituro, hirap i-apply, hirap isabuhay. And that's why my first reaction, humbling. Eh, 
Nung umorder tayo ng one-piece chicken at malit yung manok, galit na tayo. What more of what we truly are called for? It looks like it's impossible, right? That's my personal reaction. Mukhang napakang imposible naman, Lord. To follow this example, to really say, I'm willing to die for Jesus Christ. Since very determined si Paul, wala silang nagawa ang sabi, since he would not be persuaded nung hindi siya mapigil ang tumuloy sa Jerusalem, we see, sabi ni Luke, and said, let the will of the Lord be done. Kung anong nais ng Panginoon, yun ang matupad. From this, we learn one important lesson. As disciples of Jesus Christ, as those who profess faith in Jesus Christ, we should have the willingness to offer sacrifices for the sake of the gospel. We should have the willingness to offer sacrifices for the sake of the gospel. And in the case of Paul, even his life, willing siyang isacrifice yung kanyang buhay. Now, how do I apply this? Total, napakahirap to that point. But maybe we can start reflecting. What are we willing to sacrifice for the sake of the gospel? Because you and I have been called to become witnesses. Tayo ang mga saksi na magpapatunay kung sino ang Panginoong Isus at ano ang ginawa niya sa krus para sa kaligtasan ng karamay ng tao at alam natin na babalik ang Panginoong Isus, siya ay maghahari. At sino maghahatid ng magandang balita na yon? Ikaw at ako. Tayong mga nakasaksi ng kabutihan ng Diyos nung inalay niya ang kanyang sarili sa krus para sa kaligtasan natin. We are the witnesses. Now, Again, let's take a moment to reflect. What are you willing to sacrifice for the sake of the gospel? Now, as a preacher, I need to find illustration or, or real-life story in order to, to, to further show the truth of this lesson. So I was reflecting, and then I noticed verse 12, wherein it says, When we heard this, we and the people there urged him not to go to Jerusalem. Yung mga kasamahan ni Paul, sabi ni Paul, huwag kang tutuloy kasi i-aresto ka doon. At bakit nila sinabi yun? Dahil concerned sila kay Paul. Di po ba? Kung alam natin na mapapahamak yung isa natin kasamahan, Concern ka, huwag kang tumuli sa Jerusalem. Aaresto ka doon. Yun ang propesya para sa'yo. The name I can recall is Helen Pantinia along with Kuya Ray. When they were invited to minister to a very difficult ministry, alam nating lahat yun. Mahirap mag-alaga ng mga anak, mga bata na hindi sa'yo. Mahirap yun. Known fact yan. We all agree to that. Mahirap yun. So, she was told, mahirap yan. And since the ministry was starting, nansa bayan ka na, pupunta ka pa sa bukid. Bakit mo gagawin yun? Dito ka na lang sa bayan, may aircon dito. Doon wala. And then, since the ministry was just starting, walang promise na may bibigay sa'yo. Kasi nga, start up. Huwag kang tumuloy. Out of concern for her and Kuya Ray. It's out of love that advice such were given. And so, 
Helen and Ray had to make a decision. Tutuloy ba kami o hindi? So that's, that's the very real life, true to life story that I can share with you. But then, this was the response. They know, deep in her heart, that God has called her to minister to orphans, even when she was young. And so, she said yes. Mahirap. Mahirap ang ministry. Mahirap maglingkod. Malalim na element of sacrifice. Again, lesson we can learn from Paul is the willingness to offer sacrifices for the sake of the gospel. Now, in verse 32, we read, He at once took soldiers and centurions and ran down to them. Nung kakagulo na, nung dumating si Paul sa Jerusalem. When they saw the tribune and the soldiers, they stopped beating Paul. Then the tribune came and arrested him and ordered him to be bound with two chains. So, a few verses down in the same chapter, nangyari yung prophecy with regard to Paul. He was arrested. He was bound according to the prophecy. Let me quote Steve Lawson here. He said, If you have forsaken this world to follow Jesus, you have given up dirt for diamonds. You have given up dirt for diamonds. That's how vast the contrast is with regard to to focusing on this temporal world rather than focusing on the eternal kingdom of God. Empowered disciples follow the example of Christ's sacrifice. Let's continue to reflect on Paul. Uh, at one point in our life, we came to know Christ. Pakilala natin Panginoong Sus. Alam natin, nalaman natin sa pamagitan ng salita ng Diyos na siya ang Diyos na tumubos sa atin. Siya nagbigay ng buhay niya para sa atin upang tayo pagkalooban ng buhay na walang hanggan. And according to the scripture, we are now called a new baby, a new birth. We grow into maturity. It's a journey. It's a sanctifying process. We all will agree na Wala pa tayo sa complete maturity. Lahat tayo, somewhere here, growing into maturity. Lumalago sa pananampalataya. Lumalago sa pagkilala sa Panginoong Sus. Lumalago sa willingness na mag-sacrifice for the sake of the gospel. Now, this journey that we're taking, it should take us Hopefully, soonest that we agree with Paul when he said to live is Christ, to die is gain. To live is Christ, to die is gain. Yung buhay mo ay para sa Panginoong Sus at alam natin na para dumating ng pagkakataon at tayo ay lilisan na sa mundong to, it is a great gain. Because we will be with Christ. It's a journey that you and I, as we study God's Word, as we pray, as we meditate on His Word, as we come and worship together, as we reflect on His goodness, as we sing songs of the goodness of Jesus, we all grow towards that path. We also grow in a way that Paul exemplified the sacrifice of Jesus. Found in Philippians 2, verses 1 to 11. So if there's any encouragement in Christ, any comfort from love, any participation in the Spirit, and any affection and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind, having the same love, 
being in accord and of one mind. Magkaisa tayo dito. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count others more significant than yourselves. Take care of your heart. Remember that pride, the center of it, of it is I. Sin, the center of it is I. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Had this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. God himself, Jesus Christ, humbling himself, taking the form of a servant in the likeness of man. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. The very thing that Jesus did for us is the example that Paul followed. And it's the same example that you and I are encouraged to follow. Now, going back to Jesus Christ in Philippians 2. Therefore, God has a highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Lesson for us, the first of three lessons is be willing to offer sacrifices for the sake of the gospel, following the example of Christ's sacrifice. Let's continue. Now, after Caesarea, Paul indeed went to Jerusalem. Let's read these few verses together. Together, let's read. And they have been told about you that you teach all the Jews who are among the Gentiles to forsake Moses, telling them not to circumcise their children or walk according to our customs. What then is to be done? They will certainly hear that you have come. Do, therefore, what we tell you. We have four men who are under a vow. Take this man and purify yourself along with them, and pay their expenses so that they may shave their heads. Thus, all we know that there is nothing in what they have been told about you, but that you yourself also live in obedience, observance of the law. But as for the Gentiles who have believed, we have sent a letter with our judgment that they should abstain from what has been sacrificed to idols, and from blood, and from what has been strangled, and from sexual immorality. Then Paul took the men, and the next day he purified himself along with them and went into the temple, giving notice when the day of purification would be fulfilled and the offering presented for each one of them. This is the word of God. Thank you. You now be seated. So pagdating ng Jerusalem, ito yung namarites sa kanya, natolit sa kanya. Balita-balita, si Paul, nagtuturo siya ng laban kay, sa mga katuruan ni Moses. Eh siyempre, napaka-importante sa mga Jews yung mga katuruan ni Moses. They look up to him. Ngayon, ito yung kwento patukoy kay Paul. And so, maraming nagagalit against Paul because of that. And so, when he came to Jerusalem, he was advised by the Jewish leaders, uh, ganito ang gawin mo. Uh, Magpa-purify ka. Diba? Meron kang Nazarite vow, gawin mo yon At mayroon pang apat dito. Uh, magpa-shave kayo ng head, tapos magduwan kayo sa purification. Kasi nga, yung Nazarite vow, may shave, may ang, ang deal, pag ikaw yung nag-vow, papahabain mo yung buhok mo, tapos eventually, pagdatapos yung vow, mag-shave ka ng head. During that, pro, that time also of Nazarite vow, bawal kang uminom ng any alcohol, bawal kang lumapit sa corpse. And so, gawin mo to. 
shave your head along with these four men and show it also because these four men probably don't have the capacity to, to undergo that, that closing of the Nashat bow to prove, to prove na ikaw ay hindi nagtuturo laban kay Moses. And so, upon consultations, he did. He went on and he did the purification vow. And this is the result. Shaving of head. <laughs> si Paul saka apat, so lima yun. Next Sunday or next week, malamang apat na yan. At yung pang-apat narito. Huming ako ng permission dun, ha? Eh. Dito, hindi. There will be so many questions why Paul had to do that. There will be those who will not be in complete agreement. Bakit, bakit pabayag si Paul na ganun? Bakit kailangan niyang gawin yun? Well, Paul explains in 1 Corinthians 9.20, To the Jews, I became as a Jew, in order to win the Jews. It is important that we identify what are, let me borrow terms from preachers and commentators, what is essential from that of non-essential. Ano yung mga essential? Yun yung mga katuruan na hindi pwedeng i-alter. Yun yung mga katuruan na kailangan panghawakan natin. Halimbawa, our salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ alone. Huwag nating dadagdagan ng baptism, huwag nating dadagdagan ng good works, huwag nating dadagdagan ng membership in the church. Essential yon, napakahalaga nun. Pero may mga non-essential things in our Christian walk. So, kay Paul, kung non-essential din lang yan to the Jews, I became as you. I'm willing to practice the customs that Jews believe are important as long as they don't contradict important and essential teachings. Pero hindi lang just for the sake of makibagay. Ang purpose dapat malinaw in order to win the Jews upang sila ay may encourage to the faith. Laging yun ang purpose. Hindi lang to for the sake of pakikisama, but in order to bring them to Christ. Found in 1 Corinthians 9, beginning with verse 19, For though I am free from all, sabi ni Paul, I am free. I am not under the law anymore. But I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. Nakahanda akong maging alipin, mag-serve upang ang iba ay may encourage niya to the faith. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law. Though not being myself under the law, hindi na ako under law. Let's make it clear. That I may win those under the law. Now in verse 21, to those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, referring to the, those under, not under, the Gentiles. To those, I became as one, not being outside the law, but God, but under the law of Christ. I'm now under the law of Christ. I'm not under the law of the law anymore. That I may with those outside the law. In other words, this is what Paul is saying. To the Jews, I became as a Jew in order to win Jews. To the Gentiles, I became as a Gentile in order to win Gentiles. Kung meron mang customs na hindi in contradiction to the Word of God, then I'm willing to partake of those non-essentials just to win them for Christ. Very big. It takes a lot of consultations, Kung meron kayo mga questions with regard, Pastor, pwede ba umaten ng ganito? Pwede ba gumawa ng ganito? If you're unsure, you can consult us, the elders, the pastors, 
and we can refer you to some verse as a guide towards how to make a decision. For example, how is we can be a Jew to the Jews? Like, meron kang kakilalang ayaw kumain ng karne during Good Friday. Okay. To become a Jew, wag ka namang o-order ng lichon sa harapan niya. Because you're winning him for Christ. Non-essential naman yun eh. But, huwag naman yung, Uy, pwede yan, kainin natin. Bili tayo ng lechon. Kainin mo yan. Subo mo. Huwag <laughs> naman ganun. Because you're winning the person to Christ. What we can do, what you can do, is to abstain from ordering lechon. Right? Because your purpose, kailangan very clear, in order to win the person for Christ. Napakahalaga po nun. There are other guidelines in the scripture, talking about your conscience, talking about not to be a stumbling block to others. We can share with you more of those details. It's just, the topic's too broad, but if you're in a situation wherein you're finding it difficult what to do, then kindly give, give me a call uh, if necessary. And so, yun ang point ni Paul with regard to what it is to become an empowered disciple. That in everything we consider, everything we do, we do it to win others for Christ. Empowered disciples are servants to all in order to win them for Christ. In ang words na ginamit ni Paul, willing ako magpaalipin upang ang iba ay makakilala sa Panginoon. He further have written, beginning with verse 22, these are the words, to the weak I became weak that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessings. Now, to the weak in faith. Sito pa ba yung tinutukoy na? Maaring yung mga bagong mananampalataya. May mga kinagis na silang alam nilang mali and then they're struggling with it. And so we have to be considerate of them. Because we know that Believers, may mga stages yan sa kanyang journey of faith. We have to be sensitive where they are. And so, to the weak, we can become weak. Ang layunin muli, huwag natin kakalimutan, is that they may come to know Christ. Sabi ni Paul, I do it all for the sake of the gospel. Be a servant to all in order to win them for Christ. You are an empowered disciple and this is what an empowered disciple can do. Now, yun na nga, na-aresto na si Paul. Nila siya sa barracks. Here we find another lesson. Paul replied, I'm a Jew from Tarsus in Cilicia. A citizen of no obscure city. I beg you, permit me to speak to the people. Nung inaresto na nga siya, nakiusap siya. Pwede ba akong magsalita? And then, up to this word, they listened to him. Then they raised their voices and said, Away with such a fellow from the earth, for he should not be allowed to leave. And as they were shouting and throwing off their cloaks and flinging dust into the air, the tribune ordered him to be brought into the barracks saying that he should be examined by flogging to find out what they were shouting against him like this. At itong sinabi ni Paul. But when they had stretched him out for the whips, ilalatigo na siya, Paul said to the centurion who was standing by, is it lawful for you to flog a man who is a Roman citizen and uncondemned? Pwede bang gawin yun? Tinan niya yung centurion. Natakot yung centurion at 
Sabi niya, what are you about to do? For this man is a Roman citizen. So the tribune came and said to him, tell me, are you a Roman citizen? And he said, yes. We see here how Paul made good use of who he was, a Roman citizen. So nung sinabi niya yun, na put on hold yung weeping at flagging sa kanya. We see here how Paul dedicated of who he was in order that he can continue to bring the gospel to how, to everywhere, to places. Ginamit niya yon, And parang tayo din naman eh, di ba? Where we are, who we are, pwede natin gamitin yon for the purpose, once again, of the gospel. Look around you. The people seated beside you, behind you, in front of you, we all have come from different backgrounds. Katunay nung nasa seminary kami, meron kaming two semesters yata yun, uh, spiritual formation. So may booklet, sasagutan mo, pangalan mo, ano yung ethnicity mo, ano yung background mo, sino magulang mo, ano yung ginagawa ng magulang mo, ano yung influence ng magulang mo sa'yo, uh, sa kalumaki, ano yung kinagisnan mo, Ano yung mga personalities mo? Lahat yun, sinusulat. Ang purpose ng class na yun is that we can be made aware of who we are. Because who we are can greatly contribute to how we minister to others. Kung sino tayo gagamitin ng Panginoon yun. Kung saan ka nilagay ni Lord, gagamitin ka ng Panginoon. And Paul was using and is willing to use whoever he was for the sake of the gospel. Some of us have experienced real hardships in life. Traumas for some. Some of us are undergoing what seemingly we cannot see a perfect, bright future ahead of us. For example, many, a number of us here, have lost a spouse. It's very painful. As you listen to them, you will feel the trauma, the pain, and it does not last for a short period. It goes on. This is who you are. You have lost a spouse. It's a very difficult situation. But then again, you can dedicate your very experiences for the sake of the gospel. You can use your very experiences to minister to others. And all of us here, all our triumphs and defeats, we can use them for the sake of the gospel as we minister to others. Empowered disciples dedicate everything about themselves for the gospel. Therefore, the challenge for us is to dedicate everything about ourselves for the gospel. Whoever you are, whatever your experiences is, use them for the sake of the gospel. I'm showing this map. Ito yung map na yung tinatawag na fourth missionary journey ng iba at tinatawag lang ng iba na ito yung journey ni Paul going to, to Rome. Why am I showing this? This will be covered in Acts chapter 27 and 28. Why am I showing this? Because when Paul mentioned Nung bago siya i-weep, i I am a Roman citizen. So, na-postpone yung flagging, na-put on hold, hindi tinuloy. Pero dahil sinabi niya yon, yun ang nag ng way para dalhin siya sa Rome. Doon mangyayari yung hearing. Thus fulfilling Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Because according to their worldview at that time, Rome was the, at the, end, was the end of the earth. 
na fulfill because Paul mentioned kung sino siya. Ano yung testimony mo? Pag sinabi kasi yung testimony, yun yung sino ka bago mo nakilala si Lord. Ano yung mga ginagawa mo? Ano yung pinagkakabalan mo? Ano yung mga weaknesses and sins mo? Ano yung worldview mo? Yun ang testimony. And then, kailan at paano mo nakilala ang Panginoong Jesus? Sino nag-share sa'yo? Anong event? May inatend ng kamang event. Sino nag-share sa'yo ng Word of God? Kailan mo tinanggap ang Panginoong Isus? Kailan ka tunay na nanampalataya na ang kaligtasan mo ay dahil kay Jesus lamang? Hindi dahil sa yung mabuting gawa, kundi kung anong ginawa ni Jesus para sa'yo, anong siya ay namatay sa krus para sa'yo. And then, yung testimony mo, you will include, sino ka ngayon? Ano ang mga pinagkakabala mo, ano na yung priorities mo ngayon, ano yung ginagawa mo para i-priorite si Lord sa buhay mo. Ano yung mga transformations, changes na nangyari sa buhay mo? Yun ang testimony. <coughs> si Paul, sinulat niya yung kanyang testimony. In defense, binanggit niya uli. Sinabi niya nung siya ay inaaresto na nga, sinyari na yung testimony niya. Sinabi niya, Kilala niyo ako. I am a Jew in Tarsus of Cilicia, brought up in, in the city, educated at the feet of Gamaliel. Kilala niyo how, how religious I was, how passionate I was with regard to Jewish law. But then, dahil nga doon, nag, ako isang tool to arrest, to persecute yung mga na, mananampalatayan pang Jesus. Yun ang trabaho ko noon. Sabi ni Paul, ganito ako noon. At one point nga, kumuha pa akong letter na travel ako sa Damascus para yung mga mananampay doon, papaaresto ko rin. Pero on my journey, I had an encounter with Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ revealed Himself to me and I came to know who Jesus Christ is. At yun na naging transformation sa kanya. And then, sinabi niya, after that encounter, siya ngayon ay tinawag to minister to the Gentiles. And that's why is going all places. We saw that there's a three missionary journey in maps. Going all places on purpose so that he, through the preaching of God's word, may win others for Christ. That's Paul's testimony. It'll be good to write down also your own testimony. Lalo na yung mga medyo bago pa in faith, mas fresh pa sa mind mo. Yung iba, tulad ni Lloyd, siguro wala na niyang, hindi na maalala yan. Pecha, saan? Sa tagal na. Write it down because it can be a tool for you when you share the gospel to others. That's Paul's testimony. Your testimony can be used by the Lord for the furtherance of His kingdom. Let's review the three lessons we have learned. Number one, be willing to offer sacrifices for the sake of the gospel. Number two, be a servant to all in order to win them for Christ. Number three, dedicate everything about yourself for the gospel. Pray what I am. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you will continue to work in our life, that you will convince, convict, encourage us, that you will teach us the ways of God, that you will remind us of the teachings from Jesus Christ, that you will continue to pour out your love in our hearts, knowing of who we are. Sinners saved by the grace of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for you are patient, you are faithful, you are good. We ask indeed, Lord, that you will grant us such joy in our hearts, knowing that in this journey of faith that we have, 
you are growing us, you are maturing us, and knowing that you are so working greatly, we find that assurance. One day, one day, when you return, O oh Lord, we will celebrate the joy of knowing that you have worshipped, adored, honored, and offered our life to the one true God. We pray with thanksgiving. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. God po. Um, so, uh, I hope we can take into heart the different key points from our message today and be empowered disciples who offer sacrifices for the sake of the gospel, become servants to all in order to win them for Christ, and dedicate everything about ourselves for the gospel. So, I hope po as we encounter different people throughout the week and the rest of our lives po, we can be what God called us to be, which are witnesses for Christ and the gospel. And one way po that we can reach out to even more people and even strengthen our faith is by joining our different ministries po and upcoming events. So, uh, our first announcement po for today is... Our monthly prayer, oops, sorry, prayer meeting this coming Wednesday, July 5. So this will be held via Zoom at 7.30 p.m. And the Zoom link to join will be shared with our announcements group. Next po, our Barkada ministry is also inviting all men who are interested to join. They will be having another basketball game on Saturday, July 8 at 8.30 a.m. to 11 a.m. And their venue will be at the CGR Covered Court, Kumintang Ibaba. And you may approach Elder Arvin or Jello Salamin for more details. Next po, our New Gen Ministry is proud to invite you to our Daily Vacation Bible School or DVBS. Ooh. So this will be on July 17 to 22, Monday to Saturday. And this will be held every day from 9 a.m. to 12 noon here in our church. And there will be a registration fee po of 300 pesos per kid. And for more information and to sign up, you may approach Teacher Soy, Teacher Angel, Teacher Marge, or Teacher Sandra Lynn. There's also po a registration table outside um, today po, and you can approach uh, Teacher Soy for that. 
Next po is we are inviting you all to our prayer and fasting this week on July 24 to 28 from 7.30 p.m. to 9 p.m. So the topic will be the five C's of discipleship. And the Monday to Thursday schedule po will be held via Zoom, while the last day on Friday, which is the breaking of fast and our prayer meeting, it will be held on-site po here in our church. Um, at this time po, we would like to ask if there are any first-timers po here in GCF today. So we would like to ask you po to rise. Welcome Kat Agno from GCF Qatar and her two children visiting us this morning. Tayo po tayong lahat for the prayer and benediction. May the Spirit of our God continue to just empower you to fulfill what you have, what He has set for you in the most intimate, powerful way. May the joy of knowing that God who works in you is faithful and true. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you. May His favor continue to just be poured out upon you as you seek His very heart. All this we ask and pray in the most precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Isan pa nating awitan ng Diyos. Let us declare God's goodness in our lives. Sandy. 